Hello and welcome to the next video about databases. Last time we realized that maybe uh, users are a good idea. We produced a user. Yeah, I logged already in here at my with my new user. So everything you see now will be done with my new user, which will protect me messing up other databases. Okay. What we're going to do now is we're coming to the core. Uh, we're coming to the the feature of a relational database, a relation. Okay, so we want to to make some interconnections between two tables. Why are we doing this? In my example, with the students, everybody needs to have an address. Of course, everybody lives somewhere. So I could simply extend the table, and well, then add address. Yeah. Zip code, street name, town name, tak tak tak. Okay. However, what if there are siblings? Yeah. Then they are living, probably living at the same address. Yeah. What if the whole family is moving with the siblings yeah, and get a new address? Yeah. So it would be a good idea to have a table with the with the students like we have. And we have a table with addresses and reference each other so that an, a, one student can reference one address and another student maybe can reference the same address. Then I do not have to store them twice. Memory. Okay. And of course, uh, if I change it, it's changed for everything, every, everything, everybody uh, in the student list. So those references, they are very powerful. Yeah? And this is actually the core feature of, of uh, such type of databases. How is this done? Yeah? We said already, okay, there is some uh, surrogate key probably. Yeah? We can use a surrogate key in our address list, address ID, yeah? and then a new column in our student list referencing to the address ID. Then I know from the address ID, I know the address. Perfect. Yeah? Like a pointer. I think let's try this now. Okay. Let's try this now. Uh, I have to use my database. Use db hands and these are my tables. Yeah. Student list two and student list three. You remember when these were created? Yeah. Uh, I have student list now. So I'm going to create a new table with an address list. Okay, so this was create. Table and address list. I want to have the address list. I always have to check the spelling because you know typewriting. Of course, I need an address ID. Address ID. It should be an int, an unsigned integer, yeah, and it shall be the primary key, and it shall auto increment. We know this from our last table creation action. Okay, I have an address ID. This will be my surrogate key. Unsigned integer, primary key, auto increment. Bast. Then I have a town with a name. Yeah, this will be a character. And let's say everybody needs to live in some town at least. Yeah, so it is not allowed. Not now. Okay. Then we have zip code. Uh, Postletzahl. So down the number. Uh, it shall also be an int and it shall also be unsigned. Uh -huh. There is already a typo. It will it will prevent that this is okay. 
you see address ID unsigned unsigned ah, yeah. <sighs> and this is also not null everybody needs a zip code yeah. and then we have uh, the street name street name shall also be characters sometimes there are no streets in towns in little towns it's just a number yeah so street name there's not not null yeah oh no <laughs> second typo street name uh shall not can be null yeah not everybody has a street name but what everybody has is the street number street number yeah this i will save also as character because maybe it's 1a yeah, or 2b or 3c or something like this yeah so it's not just a number i will write i will save this as, as character but this has to be not null okay uh, then there is the floor floor number larger maybe which story yeah four and then there's the door number larger four and of course this will not fit because I made several typos I made here uh, unsigned then there is street number with D and then is uh, not null so back see what is this huh? use the right syntax please yeah. so luckily there is a history and a just I just have to change this yeah so street number that's one not now that's the second one and then there is the unsigned okay this worked okay. show tables we have the address list in here yeah describe address list looks good I think looks good ah uh, okay so now I have to enter a new column in my student list to reference my address yeah and I want to fill in there the address ID okay. so I'll just write all the table and I write this student list yeah? and we are adding student address okay? and it must be of the same type of course and this was int unsigned this time please write it correct student address student list all the table student list add student address int unsigned Zack. Okay. Describe student list. We should we should have a new column student address. Okay. Student address. So I can reference now. I can reference now. What I'm going to do now, I will just fill up some some uh, addresses in my address list. Yeah. So we'll take a while. Lean back and relax. <laughs> Insert into Okay, that's it for now. We have three addresses, 
let's say it's uh, sufficient for, uh, for us. Uh, let's see what we've got inside the students list. Okay. Student list. Okay, that's it. So let's say Heinz and Margit are living at the same place in Grams. So I just have to update. Okay. I just have to update and write in the name, the correct name. Okay, that's it. Student list uh, set student address equals two. Uh, where student ID is. Right, stu student list, okay, and also where it is too. Let's have a look. Student address is now referring to two, okay, and let's say Carl Carlson is living in school, yeah. so address number one, student ID three, and let's say. Uh, Opa Karl is living somewhere in Waldviertel, wunderschönen Waldviertel. Yeah. Five. Okay, this is how the addresses are now. For the others, we currently do not know it's now. Yeah. So I can look, have a look. Yeah. At this, then I have to select star from address list where address at D equals two. Then I got the address of Heinz and Margit. If I want the address from Opa Karl, I look in the in the table. Yeah, ah, Opa Karl, ah, address number three. Get me address number three, Dobandorf, Waldviertel. Yeah. It's a little bit annoying, yeah, to look says first one table and then the other table. Maybe we want to 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 just look up a certain. Uh, the address of one person. Okay. Luckily, we can. Luckily, we can uh, combine select statements. Okay. So, I can write, for instance, select everything from address list. I will get. I want to have everything from from address list. Okay, select everything from address list, address list and then where address ID is in a certain range. Yeah? And the certain range is the set, the return set, yeah? the result set of a second select. And the second select is select student address because this is where the reference the reference is is pointing here yeah? select student address from student list and now where student surename remember the type you made equals Peter Schotsky. That's it. 
we get exactly one address. Why are we only getting one address? There are two Petashovskis inside, but both Petashovskis are pointing to the same address and we only get one address. So this select student address actually returns two result lines. Yeah. If I'm just using this select statement here, yeah, the inner select statement, then we do have two lines, but both are the same. And what the in actually doing, this in here, yeah, this here, da -da -da -da, this is recognizing this, saying, aha, uh -huh, it's only one address, I show one address. Yeah. So every Petashovsky in our student list lives at that one address. Now, let's say I'm a hard worker uh, and I start living in school. Yeah. I'm not going home anymore, I start living in school. So I will update my, my entry and say student address is one, where student ID is one. I know student ID one is my input, uh, my my entry in student list. Yeah. So Heinz Petrushovsky is now living at student address one, and Mary Petrushovsky is now living at student address two. Okay. If I now use the same request, really the same request, select star from address list where address ID in blah blah blah. Yeah. I get two address because one Petrushovsky is living in St. Pölten and one Petrushovsky is living in Krems. This is how this is working. Okay, so you can cascade such select statements. That's sometimes very useful, very, 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 very useful. Yeah. Now, now. I say, okay, I update student address 5. Paul Paulson is leaving at student address 5. I can do this, you see, I can do this. From student list, there is written 5. Paul Paulson is now living at reference 5. However, in my address list, there is no reference, there is no 5. Yeah? If I'm now using this student sure name is not Petashovsky but Paulson, yeah, I get an empty set. Yeah. But it looks like it looks like there is an address inserted. Ah, this is not good for data consistency. Yeah. Because usually if I want to find out from whom I don't know an address, I would say select star from from student list where student student address is null. This would give me a list student select star from student list where student address is null. Empty set. Why is that? Ah, yeah, of course. It's a, they are not student editors, of course. Yeah. Empty set. Why is this? There are two inside which are empty. Short interruption, I found out what I wanted to show you, yeah? I just used the wrong syntax, because there is also is, is not, or is, and or is not now. Yeah? I'm not allowed to use the equal operator there. Hmm. Wasn't aware of it, I'm sorry, but now I know. I show you. Yeah? Select star from student list, where student list is now. This is getting me now the right result set. Yeah? If it's if I write this, it is not working. Yeah? Because it really tries to compare now the stream. Yeah? Okay. 
can happen. Yeah. Yeah, let's resume. However, if I list all those persons which student address is empty, then I'm getting the whole wrong list. Yeah? Because Paul Paulson student, this five, yeah? it's referring to a wrong or not existing entry in address list. And what if I simply delete an entry in address list? Then I have here references pointing to non-existing entries in, 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 in the list. Yeah? This is bad. Yeah? This is bad for data consistency. Uh, this is really not that ideal. Yeah? This is why we can formalize such things. Yeah? And this is the topic of our next video. Okay? Next video we will learn how to prevent such things that we can enter here a reference which is not existing or that we can delete a reference where something is referring to. If this is a huge database, nobody knows what is referring to an entry. If I delete this entry, it's gone. Yeah? And I would expect that if somebody is referring to this entry, it somehow is checked by the DBMS. This is, this is the thing we are going to, to do next time. Yeah? Next time we try to prevent such errors. For this time, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.